Hello Marvel friends, today we have some big MCU news and a bunch of stories to go over in this news video roundup. The Netflix Daredevil show just made officially canon to the MCU. Leaked Daredevil fight scene in Echo has MCU fans disappointed. Steven Yen drops out of Thunderbolts. Avengers 5 being delayed and much more. If you want to stay up to date with all of the best movie news, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an upload. Did the Netflix Daredevil series just become canon to the MCU? There will be a lot of MCU shows coming to Disney Plus this year, set to be the first series under the Marvel Spotlight banner, Echo, is arriving this month, continuing the story of Maya Lopez after the events of Hawkeye. As Matt Murdock gets ready to return to the MCU, speculation regarding the character's continuity regarding his past in television, as well as future, has been up in the air and widely debated. Marvel Studios producer for the Echo TV show, Brad Winderbaum, addresses how Netflix's Daredevil series is canon to the franchise. Brad Winderbaum is the head of streaming, television, and animation at Marvel Studios, and has been with the company since the first film in 2008's Iron Man. With Daredevil set to have a role in Echo, Winderbaum was asked by Screen Rant in regards to how the Netflix show may or may not factor into Echo when it comes to being canon to the sacred timeline. As far as Winderbaum is concerned, he considers the Netflix Daredevil show fully part of the MCU's central timeline, sharing the following. Quote, I can say that up until this point, we've been a little bit cagey about what's sacred timeline, what's not sacred timeline. That was born of, frankly, a period at the studio where we were like, we have to stick the landing with the vendors. It was another part of the company developing the Netflix stuff. We were aware of what they were doing, they were aware of what we were doing, but there was a lot to balance anyway. But now that some time has passed, now that we see actually how well integrated the stories are, I think that I personally, Brad Winderbaum, would be confident in saying that it is part of the sacred timeline. So there you have it. A very close to the company producer declaring this past Marvel show produced by Netflix as a part of the sacred timeline that is the MCU. Although Kevin Feige has yet to come out and address this statement to the debunk or confirm. This would raise many questions as to why Daredevil never showed up in previous big events like Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame. Also, how many characters will return from the Netflix Marvel shows like Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and others. It also puts any small minute detail that doesn't quite translate from Netflix to MCU on the hot seat as some fans have displayed a lack of interest in making these Netflix shows canon to the MCU saying that these shows don't hold the same level of quality control or standards as the rest of the MCU. However, Daredevil in all three seasons were beloved by fans, Cox's portrayal has been helmed as one of the goats of the comic book movie genre, and as well as the possibility of seeing other fan favorite characters like John Bernthal's The Punisher. What do you think? Is Marvel making the right move by making Daredevil canon? Echo director defends leaked Daredevil scene. In the past number of days, a scene from the upcoming Echo series was leaked depicting a fight between Echo and Daredevil to many Marvel fans' displeasure. Not to the leak itself, but the choreography and filming of the fight scene. Some fans felt that the Echo directors were simply trying to remake Daredevil's famous hallway one-shot fight scene, while others criticized the overall choreography of the fight itself, saying it looked like rehearsals or low budget. The director for Echo, Sidney Freeland, has came out and defended the scene, stating, quote, It's one shot, it's six minutes long, and story dictates everything. Maya Lopez enters that scene as a teenage girl, but she leaves as a cold-blooded killer, and it was important for me that the audience is able to see that transformation happen in real time. Freeland also teased that appearances by Daredevil and Kingpin won't be the only ones Marvel fans can expect in Echo. She added, there are a number of cameos in our series, and fans of the MCU will see characters from other films and shows that they recognize. But at the same time, you don't have to have done your homework coming into this. People who aren't familiar with the MCU can still come in and watch this. This will be good for the Echo series as many fans have stated that going into a new show or movie with required homework is tiring, but is the negative conversations regarding the show going to impact its success? The scene itself hasn't gained the negative attention that the She-Hulk Daredevil fight scenes did, but this isn't the positive word of mouth the studio would be looking for. 
Our next story is a report coming from The Hollywood Reporter stating that Stephen Yen has officially dropped out of the Thunderbolts project. Stephen Yen will not be suiting up for Thunderbolts, the anti-hero-centric feature in the works from Marvel Studios, sources tell The Hollywood Reporter. Yen's involvement in Thunderbolts was first reported back in February, rumored to be playing the Sentry though Marvel never officially announced the casting. Five months earlier, during a D23 presentation, the studio revealed Florence Pugh, Sebastian Stan, David Harbour, Wyatt Russell, and Julia Louis de Vries were among the Marvel mainstays who would be in the film. While the reason for Yen's departure hasn't been confirmed, it's likely due to scheduling conflicts. The movie has been hit by several delays, most recently caused by the SAG after actors strike and the release date has been pushed back by a year. Like many tentpoles, Thunderbolts was struck by last year's dual writers and actors strike, which put schedules in disarray across Hollywood. Why do you think Steven Yen dropped out of the Thunderbolts? Our final story has Avengers 5 been delayed? The rumor in question comes from the Cosmic Circus writer Alex Perez, who commented in a post on X, quote, Be advised, Avengers 5 is not coming out in 2026. There is still much work to be tended to and too much to set up before they can dive deep into the upcoming Avengers movie. That said, neither Marvel nor Disney have confirmed this, so such a claim should be taken with a grain of salt. Meanwhile, the rumor is getting attention on social media as fan speculation continues over what will happen next with the Kang in the MCU. This isn't the only bit of news surrounding Avengers 5. Last month, it was announced that the project lost its original title, Avengers the Kang Dynasty, after Kang the Conqueror actor Jonathan Majors was fired from Marvel due to being found guilty of assault and harassment. Avengers 5 also lost its director, Destin Daniel Critton, though he'll continue to work with Marvel Studios on other projects. Should Marvel replace Kang or should they recast Majors? What do you think would be the best for the franchise, and what do you think is ultimately hurting the fifth Avengers movie? Another rumor circulating is that the MCU has already found their replacement for Majors, and that they are continuing forth with Kang as the franchise's main villain, despite conflicting rumors and reports. Previously, Kang was played by Majors in the MCU, and the plan was for the actor to reprise the role for Avengers Kang Dynasty, and according to film scooper Daniel Rickman, acclaimed actor Coleman Domingo has been eyed as a potential replacement for Majors as Kang. The actor is best known to Walking Dead fans for his role as Victor Strand in the first spin-off series Fear the Walking Dead, and with his acclaimed role in the Netflix movie Rustin, which earned Domingo a Golden Globe Award. Is Domingo the right replacement for Jonathan Majors' Kang role? If you want to know whether or not the MCU should recast Majors as Kang or replace the character altogether, then make sure to check out this video right here. If you enjoyed today's news roundup, let me know by liking and subscribing, and I will keep them coming. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.